Welcome to the Erasmus Foundation podcast. My name is Paul Nugent. Are you looking for answers to life and its meaning? Then this may well be the very podcast you need to listen to. In a series of podcasts, we are going to look at the difficult questions of life and apply spiritual knowledge to find out the answers. Hello. Today, we are going to look at a title of a book written by Erasmus many centuries ago by the name of In Praise of Folly. But I think Erasmus, greetings, by the way. Greetings, Erasmus. Greetings. I, I believe, Erasmus, that you're going to compare this with modern day, aren't you? Well, I really wanted to talk about modern day and not really, really refer to the book I wrote all that time ago, which is not really so relevant. And I really would like to talk about concerns and matters that are of interest to people today. Indeed. So... You've given me some questions to ask you. Mm -hmm. And the first one, interestingly enough, is what is madness? Well, indeed. Now, I would suggest that one must consider two very distinct definitions for that term, madness. One which is not really so widely applied these days, but could refer to a physical mental disorder of the body. But what I would also like to talk about, perhaps more so or more important to my view on all this is the term of madness where somebody is not a victim of some mental disorder, but merely, let us say, very individual. Some people might say a little strange at times, or a little eccentric, but that is not necessarily or rarely really a mental disorder. It is simply to do with their psychological structure. And that is really what I am interested to discuss with you. Shall we look into that to begin with then? That, that, so what do you feel about someone that has those traits, would you say, Erasmus? Someone who is not, in inverted commas, normal, whatever that may be. Well, yes, indeed. And from my view, seeing things on your world from a spirit's point of view, I would simply see that person defined by their tapestry of life, designed by the great mind as a general format for the structure, the psychological structure of that person living that life within the earth. Okay. So that's one side of madness. The other side is, as you say, it's not used uh, as a description of someone that has a, a mental illness, but uh, is mental illness, I, I'm just wondering, is it in the brain or is it in the mind where this lies? Well, that is a very good question. And I would suggest that in terms of psychiatry, or in terms of modern medicine, 
that mankind does not fully, if I may say this, and I don't wish to sound at all in any way arrogant, but man, as far as I see, doesn't fully understand the difference between the mind and the brain as we are familiar with this in spirit. Now, I must justify having said this and must add to say that in our understanding from spirit, man is made up of two things, the physical and the spiritual. And the brain is part of the physical. It is the physical computer of the body, which functions only entirely while the body lives. But the mind is the spiritual self. The mind is creative. It contains all the memory of everything you have learnt in other lives, in times gone by, perhaps millions and millions of years, worth of knowledge. It is all there. Your intuition, your general wisdom, so much is in there. And so much of that is overshadowed and hindered, suffocated by the activity of the brain. So when it comes to asserting or diagnosing a mental illness, very often it is simply a medical physical problem within the brain, which is causing the problems. But sometimes a person can go through life experiencing such trauma and stress. It can also affect the mind while they're living this life. And that is another matter which really needs a different approach in finding some form of healing or cure. The physical problem may be dealt with drugs and medicines to help the person overcome the problems. But if it is of the mind, then of course, no drug or medication will have any effect whatsoever. How can it? A physical thing dealing with something spiritual, the mind. So it is vital. And this is the part that is missing so much within your world at this present time. It is vital that the people dealing with this medically would first need to identify very clearly where the problem lay, whether it was simply a physical brain condition or was it something that had affected the mind? Thank you, Erasmus. Now, even in my lifetime, mental illness has grown at an alarming rate. In fact, I don't recall much about it when I was younger, but today it's very much in the forefront of people's minds, isn't it? So what do you think has caused this? It is the accumulation of many things. There are many burdens upon people, many pressures, 
caused by the nature of life within your world, which has a very big influence on the state of people's health, generally, not just mentally, but generally as well. Stress is very damaging. Now, this is known within your world, but not enough consideration is paid to this. Otherwise, more would be done to prevent stress affecting people. But also with young children at a very early age in primary schools, they are being subjected to exams or some forms of stressful tuition, pressure, which is causing more and more mental instability within children of that age. And it is noted, and it is understood this is happening. But yet again, why is it that the authorities dealing with children's education insist on placing that stress and pressure on such young developing brains. It is not good. No, no, I, I can see that. So Erasmus, there's always been a purpose for everything that takes place on the earth. Indeed. And people with individual personalities that we described as being slightly mad or eccentric, Mm -hmm. in a way shows that they are individuals, doesn't it? Indeed. And to refer to the title of this talk, in praise of folly, was really just to refer back to where I did talk a little about some forms of madness in the book I wrote, really to say that perhaps in this world, at times there needs to be a little madness. Now, what I particularly refer to in this is that for creative people, for people involved in drama, perhaps comedy, things of this nature, they are a little strange, you might think. You could consider them and say they are mad even. And also it has been evident in some forms of art where an artist had been diagnosed with a mental disorder. But without that particular part of their nature, let us say, that psychological structure, they would not have been the type of person to produce most wondrous, very different forms of art. Whether it is writing, painting, sculpture, whatever. The very strange nature has produced this unusual art form, which has been a great gift to mankind and a great gift to that individual who, of course, might be suffering 
in some ways in the world. But then life on the earth is not without pain. And that is a part of life for everyone to a lesser or greater degree. But it has given the world something. It could be, and you could, might think of many comedians, many perhaps who have gone on to make famous films and living their life the way they did, which was perhaps considered a little eccentric. They gave a lot to people and they made a part of the world of what it is now. Yes. So even widening this a little bit more to diversity, that we are, as, as a, a race, a little bit feared of people that aren't the same as us. But it is, mm -hmm. in fact, the other people that are different from us that bring something new to the, to the party, excuse the expression. Indeed, yes and to be welcomed. And again, perhaps as man matures spiritually and develops more going into the future, mankind will learn to appreciate those who are different, those who speak a different language, who believe in a different religion, come from a different culture, or even within their own land, perhaps act a little strangely or a little different to what they expect. All that is part of the gift of life that the great mind has created for your world, for people to enjoy the difference in others, to seek the need to understand others and how they are, what they stand for, where they come from, how they behave, what they believe, all of these things. And it is important for every individual to experience these things to meet fellow man because there is something to be learnt in that process. Very simple. Indeed. And I think as things move on, as spiritual awakening increases, as it's doing now, and people understand that inside every one of us is spirit and that we can see them living their lives different from our own, but with the knowledge that everything that we experience helps us to grow spiritually. Indeed. It is that diversity within, within all things within the earth that creates a wondrous rainbow of colors, textures, and differences to be enjoyed, to be accepted as a gift for man to enjoy and to perhaps enjoy the research and the wonder that others offer at times. So that is why I believe that a little madness is not a bad thing within your world. No, not at all. And, but flipping the coin again, just mm -hmm. to show that we've got two sides of this word madness, mm -hmm. is on a serious note of, of, of people that are struggling with this, mm -hmm. Is it insurmountable, this, this problem that people are having? Would they always have to be treated with drugs? Or is there a way of, of helping them away from this 
issue they're having without drugs at all? Well, I need to refer to what I was saying earlier about the diagnosis of understanding the nature of the problem, the condition, whether it is within the mind or within the brain. If it is within the brain, it is possible, it is possible that the person can work through certain conditions in their life. It will always be there, and it will surface at times, causing others around them to be a little disturbed, a little perhaps upset, surprised, shocked even at times. Or that individual can learn to work through that condition a little to subjugate it and find some control over it. Now, that is possible. On the other hand, it is important to say that with some forms, perhaps of more serious mental disorders, particularly of the brain, then drugs might be needed on a permanent basis. And of course, another consideration where man considers some extremes of mental illness, where a person is quite violent, perhaps a psychopath or something of this nature, Again, man needs to understand that a spirit could come within the earth to live a life in evil, with evil intent, and in spirit that is acceptable because all spirits need to experience all things, be all things, do all things, and see all things, to have evolved into a state of knowledge and understanding as an ancient spirit has developed into. But further from this, if the condition is of the mind. If the condition is not caused by, as I have just said, a spirit living in evil, as it is required by the tapestry designed by the great mind. If it is not that, if it is a condition that has been caused by trauma or situations, events within their life on the earth to have disturbed them so much in this way, then some understanding, some perhaps course of healing with counseling can be used to help that person. And that can help them and get them through this. So it's so important, as I have said, to have full understanding and by diagnosing the exact cause of the condition. Okay, Erasmus. So the future then. Let's look at, uh, we will take away the word madness from mental health and we'll just say, what's the future for madness as expressed about individuality and mental health in the future? What would Well, be? there will always be individuals. There will always be those who perhaps act a little differently, who people might find 
they were not acting or behaving as expected and would consider them not quite normal according to the rules of behavior which mankind expects from people as normal. As you say, whatever that is. Not something that can be defined in all truth, of course. But one thing I will say, again, as man learns and changes life upon the earth, as man learns to be more peaceful, to change his pace of life, to eradicate stress and all those burdens that your society insists on weighing heavily upon people. When all that is eradicated from the world, then much mental illness will disappear as well. I'm not saying it will all entirely go, no, because if the great mind designs within the tapestry of life for an individual living on the earth, that some form of mental illness is going to be a part of that life, part of that experience that spirit must work through living a life on the earth, then, of course, that will be there. And it will be something that the person will meet according to how it should be and how it may be eradicated or how they could be helped and possibly cured. Thank you, Rasmus. That's, that's great. So the sooner man aligns himself with the pulse of life, the better he will find the future. Is that correct? Oh, indeed. Yes. Because it is the pace of life which is not in accordance with the natural law. The natural law lives, exists to a certain pulse, which is the pulse of the universe. And that is more peaceful and it is different to the way man is at the present. And when man has learnt to pace himself more correctly, he will live longer, he will live with less disease, less illness, generally speaking. And that is another important consideration why this aspect of the speed and pressures of life should be looked at and reviewed. Thank you, Erasmus. We're coming to the end of our podcast now. It's been very mm -hmm. interesting uh, indeed. So is there anything else you'd like to add before we stop for the day? No, I think... Possibly one word I would like to include in a summary of what we have discussed, and that is tolerance. That people should adopt and learn to be a little more tolerant of others to search for understanding in others, to want to understand why a person is as they are. 
if they might seem a little different, then why is this? There's always a reason. And it is the challenge for all to understand as much as they can by asking the right questions to discover the right answers. The Erasmus Foundation is a spiritual teaching and healing foundation based in Laxfield, Suffolk in the United Kingdom. We have a web page www.erasmus-foundation.org If you would like to be a guest on our podcast or indeed have further questions for us then please contact me on paul at erasmus-foundation.org and we'll do our best to accommodate you. Thank you very much for listening.